one. And we are live. Finally. Hey, no blue screen is going to stop <laughs> us. Uh, hello, and welcome to Developer Insights. I'm David. And I'm Justin. Uh, together, we are the leads on game development and design here at Codename. Oh my god. <laughs> we also <laughs> okay? come Codename, too. Yeah, uh, my voice just blue screened. Oh, dear lord. Um, we will be your hosts for this episode and for every episode. Uh, because when we're not here, the show doesn't happen. Still holding up. Uh, today is our 92nd episode. And that means we're only eight weeks away from 100. Eight weeks! That'll be on September 21st. Just mark your calendars. Yeah, so I have some news. You wouldn't. Yep, I would. I am on vacation for the next two weeks, so... The people are not going to stand for this. I'm, I'm not sure what to say. Sorry? I don't think you are. That's yeah, because I'm not. I knew it. Uh, as always, we are here to answer development <sighs> and design questions. They say you're quiet. Idle champions. This is terrible. <laughs> is it happening again? No, we do it every episode. No. <laughs> we have audio related issues. Yeah, uh, ever since I was sick. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Just, just turn me up. Before I... You're already at max volume, Justin. I mean, yeah. You need to make Justin louder button. <laughs> I am yelling. Yelling, I say, into my mic. All right. Try now. Okay, I'm trying now. How do I sound, folks? Do I sound good? I know I don't sound good because I've my voice is horrible, but <clears throat> that's really peculiar. We look like we're at about the same volume levels. I can boost you up, see what happens. Not any louder. Not any louder. Sounds like a string phone. How is it like I sound fine in my ears? Close. And do I sound fine in your ears? Alright. Is Justin any louder, anyone? How is it possible that it could be coming through differently than it's coming through in okay, my I'm, I'm getting A better. Single nope. better. Yes, better. Nope. Nope. Yes, better. And a nope. I mean, <laughs> could you people please be consistent? <laughs> this is very <laughs> difficult. It's hard to debug an issue. I mean. All right. Maybe I just sound muffled because I am just muffled. It's like I'm yeah. trying to talk through a pillow. What are you doing? Are you doing some yeah, sort of audio that. manipulation? Nope. All right. I bumped you up end? even higher. Let's 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 see. Okay. Uh, is he better now? <laughs> am I am I better now? Yes, emote. We are. At, I am asking you to be consistent. Uh, <laughs> Nobody's answering. Uh, yeah. Lauren says it's still the same. It hasn't well, changed. It's really. I, I say. Do you? Why does All it right. sound muffled? See, that's the thing. I think it has I, something I to understand. do with where it's. Can, you can't turn up your zoom volume any further. Uh, I can turn up my zoom volume. Last time I tried to do that, I got slapped on the wrist, but I can try to turn mine up. No, 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 now no. it's at max. It's now you at sound, max. Yeah, now you sound like you're just, you're getting crushed. All right. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> All right, louder, turn, turn it down just a little bit, and then we'll, we'll go ahead. Okay, I'll turn it down to 90%. All right, we're going to have to go with that, and we're going to okay. figure this out. The sort of a uh, sad and disappointing thing is we were actually working through the audio just before this and literally my system blue screened and that's why we're running a little bit late. So uh, let's carry on. Uh, apologies for the audio. Um, we will work it out uh, after Justin gets back from his vacation. I swear we will figure that out. Um, that said, uh, if you don't ask any questions, I'm sure there will be questions, uh, but you may have to suffer through Justin's one man reenactment of his first hour of Baldur's Gate 3 experience. <laughs> Yes. Uh, spoiler alert, it's just me staring at my Steam client waiting for it to finish downloading. <laughs> it's a big, chonky game. Well, you know, you don't fit all of those character customization options into just a few gigs. Um, actually, you do. Hey, if I wanted developer <laughs> insights from you, I'd watch a different <laughs> stream. Oh, wait. No, never mind. Uh, just this is the right place. You, you actually are going to have to turn your volume down just a little bit. What? No. Yeah, it's really oh. blown out. All right, that's fine. 
All right. I mean, I can turn myself down a little bit and everyone can bump up their stream volume. I think that's the only option I've got. So it's, I'm going to do that. It's developer insights, not uh, streamer insights. Yeah, if we were streamer insights. Um... Oh, now you're quieter to me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to turn you up. I can do okay. that. Okay. So um, where were we? Right, of course. As always, we have <laughs> this is going lovely. Perfect. Anyway. Uh, as always, we have pulled some questions forward from the previous show that we did not get to, and we will answer some of those while we're waiting for new questions to come in. Um, but of course, before we get to those, uh, we have oh, I don't have any updates. Damn it. Peter is also on vacation uh, this week, and as such, um, nothing got rolled out. So we have nothing in the fixes and new features list. This is August is the perfect month for this sort of thing. So uh, yes. hopefully we'll have some of these uh, when you do get back or when Justin gets back. The next time we have a show, I'm hoping to have some of these crossed off. But I will go over three the weeks items. from now. We better. That's true. <laughs> I will go over some of the items that are still on the list, uh, starting with making it so that season champions do not appear in the free time gate choice. Um, with the option now to open a thousand chests, we would like to take a pass on how many you can buy at a time, uh, because if you can open more at a time, it makes sense. You probably be able to buy more at a time. Um, we are going to go over <laughs> finding hotkeys for. Okay, I can kind of read in the chat. Uh, they're, they're saying that I'm working now. That can't be the case. Seriously. All I did was like I, I, I adjusted the mic. Maybe there's like a, a broken wire or something going on. We just have to unplug everything and plug it back in. Oh no, they're saying way, way louder. Okay, well, I'll turn myself back up a little bit. How's that? All right, carrying on. Oh my gosh. And the muffing is gone less. Okay. Um, we wanted to add a hide UI button for the lower UI, um, but that is still subject to making sure that we can do that without uh, revealing that some of the art is not there. Uh, we're going to confirm that all, all areas have distractions properly assigned to them. Uh, this is something that is in progress. Um, we do want to make it so that if you if you are a player or if you kick a player, uh, probably this from the perspective of the people kicking, not the kicked player. Uh, if you kick a player from the trials lobby, uh, that they can't just re rejoin immediately. Um, order the favor display so that it's not just in ID order. Um, add a sort order to the shop by price because that would make perfect sense. Uh, add the option back to the blacksmithing contract screen so that you can sort by slot and add arrows for fine tuning selections um, of blacksmith contracts and probably other dialogues uh, when you're doing that on a touch screen. All right, uh, no announcements and on to leftover questions. Let's hope this goes smoothly from here on in. Uh, first question left over from last week. This is from JC Daxian. Uh, you are talking about adding more champions, but what about familiars and specifically sprites slash fairies? I need to have six little fairies hovering on my screen zapping people with lightning. Could that be a thing? P.S. New player that's really enjoying myself this summer. <laughs> well, JC Daxian, welcome to the game. I hope you're uh, back in our stream this week. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the idea of adding, uh, we're adding familiars all the time. I think we add uh, a couple of familiars a month at this point, <laughs> uh, possibly at too quickly a rate, who knows. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not the one who picks which familiars get added in, but I'm sure that uh, some more fairies and, and sprites and, uh, and little fey creatures will, uh, will come down the pipe at some point. And, uh, and hopefully you'll still be playing when they do. Uh, I actually pulled. I pulled forward a lot of questions from last week because we had at the end of last week's show we had a bunch uh, more, uh, a bunch of really good questions. So uh, I pulled those forward. The next one here is from uh, Ra Chapur for uh, for you, Dave. Exciting. And uh, they they asked, uh, do you know the reason why for the last three consecutive weeks there were one to four hour problems in connecting to the servers between Sunday and Monday? All so right. this is not the last. We didn't actually yeah, have anything last this show. past weekend. We yeah. had we had a, a weekend where nothing happened, and then some. Yeah, some of the weekends before. That. I think it was only twice. Yeah, I feel like that third was. Yeah, it feels like three, but it was only two. Um, so we we do know what went wrong, uh, or rather, we know what stopped working, but we don't know exactly why uh, it ended up going uh, stopped working. We actually had two servers, so I guess there's two factors to this. I know, Justin. Um, this this is something that that we've been meaning to look into, and I know we asked some of the um, the community sites that run some of the third party stuff because we were worried mm -hmm. that we were going to end up breaking like the entirety of it if we, if we didn't uh, first make sure that we uh, uh, checked in and let them know what we knew what we were thinking. Um, and that is that um, 
one of the so one server on one of the servers each of the weeks, and it was a different server each week. Um, the uh, the database system stopped responding, and unfortunately, due to the way the game's set up, and because you can connect from other servers, the servers are interconnected with each other, and unfortunately, when one um, one server uh, freezes up, that then cascades out and results in in every server freezing up. And, um, unfortunately, the timing on that, of course, Sunday uh, early early Sunday morning. Uh, or I guess early Monday morning in that case. Yeah, um, 1 a.m. our time. Yeah. Uh, no one is awake to catch that. Um, and so that's why it ends up being, you know, one to four hours uh, before anyone actually sees it and fixes it. Um, but I know that one of the uh, things that we were thinking about doing was actually adjusting it so that you the servers do no, no longer communicate with each other, um, which would mean that uh, in a situation like that, it would at least mitigate uh, the downtime to just anyone who was, who was logged into that particular server. Um, but we were making sure that we didn't uh, sort of break other services that we're using or are, 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 are taking advantage of the fact that the servers do communicate with each other. So I'm not exactly sure where we're at on that one, Justin, but I know it feels uh, like something I, I, that... I, uh, I believe the last the last time I talked to uh, to Peter about this, we'd gotten confirmation from uh, at least the, the biggest of the um, the third-party sites that they handled the, uh, the sort of uh, <laughs> back-end stuff that we did um, <coughs> excuse me, to, uh, to switch play servers. So that's, uh, that, that should be, it should be good to go. We just need to find a time to, uh, to turn that on and make sure it doesn't break anything else. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Next question. Uh, this question is from Brent Copeland. Uh, and they ask, when you get the pop-up message that you're receiving contracts for having equipment levels over the cap on, uh, X champion, why doesn't it tell you which champion? Yeah, so the answer for this is, uh, <laughs> it's, so the first time that we put this message box in, the first time we had this kind of contract um, rewarding or a, a refunding uh, thing in the game, it was uh, kind of across the board. It wasn't for a specific champion, it was actually for all champions on their ultimate equipment uh, item. Because previously, if you went over the cap, or if, say, you were already over the cap, and then you upgraded your gear to shiny or, or uh, golden, uh, which has a lower cap, it would uh, you just have those levels and uh, and then there wouldn't be any way to uh, to refund them. So when we added in the refunding, there were some players who uh, would have gotten items back or item levels back, uh, contracts back from uh, potentially dozens and dozens and dozens of of champions. And so we had to make sure that the message box was going to be uh, concise enough that it wouldn't scroll off the top and bottom of screen uh, for people who had stuff like that. So we we basically just uh, purposefully avoided uh, naming the specific champions for brevity's sake. Um, I think at this point, it's possible we could take another look at that uh, that message box and uh, and adjust some things. It is a very generic message box. It's not something that we have specifically thrown together for that. It's literally just something where we can have the server send some text to the front end and have the the uh, the client display that. And so, um, you know, adding in some complexity like a scroll bar or something like that would be probably beyond the scope of that particular um, particular message box. But we could look at maybe if there are less champions um, involved in the in the the calculations that it could potentially include uh, which ones they were. Uh, let's see. Next question here, Dave. Sure. This question is from Star Chaser Forty Three, and they would like to know what will be the first convention CNE will have a presence. It says too late for Gen Con. Will any of the devs be there to man the booth? So this is an interesting question because uh, actually before COVID, uh, we we did do some some conventions. Uh, we were at I don't know we were at maybe dozen half, a dozen, well, yeah, half a dozen half PAXs, a dozen PAXs, um, <clears throat> including a very famous one where we had a, a gelatinous oh, cube. No. Uh, that we <laughs> and then another one of. where we didn't have a gelatinous <laughs> cube. <laughs> yeah, uh, poor gelatinous cube. R.I.P. Um, at least insurance covered it, but. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we've been to, uh, <coughs> to several PAXs. Uh, then COVID happened, uh, and, uh, and there weren't really very many conventions. Conventions are obviously starting up again. Um, right now, uh, Eric, our CEO, is down at Gen Con, uh, bumping elbows down there and hanging out with Mars, I think. Um, he's there for, quote, meetings, I think is what he said. I, I, yes. I, sounds, him, uh... him, and, him and his wife down there for meetings. Yeah, suspect. Uh, oh, and me. Sean's down there too. Did Sean go to Gen Con? Is that why he's not here? 
<laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> he didn't tell um, us that. He just said he was sick. What's going on? No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> I'm not sure if we'll be doing conventions um, in the future. The uh, It is quite expensive to do conventions and send staff and pay for hotels and all this, this stuff. Um, and, yeah, logistically, uh, it's, a, it's certainly it's, a lot of work. Yeah. Um, I think we'd like to do more in the future. I think it's just yeah. a question of what makes sense. And I'm not sure sort of what the what the booth space looks like. I know when, when uh, we had our first PAX booth, we actually had to sort of uh, uh, nose our way in to, to sort of first yes. share a booth and then and then be able to get uh, contacts there and then actually get a booth. So I sort of, I, I'm, it might be a little easier now because I'm sure the sort of not everyone's doing them right now, but- mm -hmm. um, That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 but I, I yeah, I, I think it'll, it'll I, I think we'll, we'll do some conventions again when it, when it makes sense, sense to, uh, to spend the marketing dollars there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, this one is from Onyx Squared, and they would like to know uh, when will you have another CNE original live stream uh, DM'd by Lauren and starring the staff? Yeah, that's a great idea, uh, and I, I think this is a, a fantastic chance to plug uh, <laughs> our extra live stream, which is actually it's kind of coming up. A little um, earlier this year than than normal. Yeah, um, normally normally we do our twenty four hour extra life stream kind of mid to late uh, mid November. to late November. Yeah, I think we yeah. were nineteenth twentieth last year. Yeah, uh, and this year we're doing it. When are we doing it? It's Dave? October this year. Like nineteenth. That's a Thursday. Twentieth. Uh, yeah, it'll be October twentieth this year. So we moved it up a full month. Yeah, uh, for so. logistical reasons. So. Yeah, so uh, if uh, if Lauren wishes to do another uh, CNE original <laughs> live stream, that is likely when that would happen. And uh, so so make sure you're uh, you're sticking around and tuning in for that, because uh, in addition to the CNE original live streams, there's always plenty of really fun stuff. Um, lots of lots of D and D games. Uh, lots of well, I don't know what we stream. I, we don't stream a lot of board games. I don't think we stream some. Uh, yeah. I mean, usually we got Saber. Q and A's. Uh, yeah. Last year there was a cactus painting segment. Oh, uh, yes. That was awesome. I think this year we're going to have a dad joke segment. Uh, we're yeah, pushing yeah. for that. That's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Dexter and I going head to head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not technically allowed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I'm gatekeeping. Well. <laughs> We do an yeah. uncle joke segment, but I feel like that's uh, inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, next next question. The next question here is from, oh my, Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenixian, Phoenixian. I, yeah, okay, Phoenixian ultimatum. Uh, currently, time gates have a system where you can get extra chests for going above and beyond fifty areas. Is it being considered to incorporate a similar system to events? As it stands, just doing a run to 50, quit, restart for more chests, seems boring and not engaging. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought this was an interesting question. So there is there are some differences between time gates and, and events. So for time gates, you pay up front with your time gate pieces, or it's a free time gate, you don't pay at all. And then you sort of don't pay anything else as you go. For events, um, you do pay per adventure. And so if we were going to change events into something where you got extra chests for going further in a free play rather than just getting one chest we'd have to change the pricing uh, of of those free plays <clears throat> and it, it would be a little bit awkward if sort of you know you got to area 50 and it's like would you like to keep going if you want to keep going it's going to be another 2500 event tokens and so i think there's there's some some thoughts to be had uh on whether or not something like this would make sense um, but they are definitely they are different. They're different enough that uh, that just sort of slapping that on to the events um, wouldn't really make sense. Okay. Do, do, do. All right. Uh, it looks like that is the end of the leftover questions from last week. Uh, moving on to this week, first question of the day is from Randram, and they would like to know any chance the new effect key defines. 5107 and 5108, okay, that's awfully specific, uh, which has the key season reward, season to end warning, uh, which looks like it auto claims the level 60 GE can be made optional, so it doesn't brick every gearless account who happened to participate and level up in the season as a 
as a punish, which is what it looks like right now, uh, especially with slot specific GE in the free path in S2, 3, 4. Uh, so potentially going forward. I'm yeah, sure so exactly. this is basically, so, <laughs> but I, I get the gist of the yeah. question. Yeah, the, the, the gist of the question here is, uh, is basically this person has, uh, has, has data mined some upcoming stuff. One of the things that we're um, thinking about putting in uh, for seasons moving forward is basically an auto claim on any uh, rewards yep. that you haven't claimed when the Don't season ends. Don't want you to miss your rewards at the end. That would be, uh, be yeah. terrible. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and uh, and that would also include any sort of bonus rewards past level 60 as well. Um, so the answer to this question is yes, we have thought about uh, putting in an option for it. And I believe the, uh, the the plan right now is to put in an option for it so that you can you can basically check a box in this during the season that says don't give me don't auto claim rewards when the season ends. Um, and, uh, and yes, so we, we did think about that, and, uh, and that is something that we are, um, we are planning to get in. I think the season ends on the 30th, so we've got a little bit of time to, uh, to get it in. Yeah, and I think that'll have to come with a, do you, like, you know, a, ver a, a, a verification box. Of, like, do you really, really, really don't want to claim the rewards mm -hmm. at the end? And then you'll Actually, click you OK. To, you have to unlock the verification yeah. box by, uh, by running a different variant. Oh, OK. That's not what I had. Call back to but... several weeks ago. Mm, mm, right. No. Right. <clears throat> but yes, okay. and it was it was interesting because I was I, I saw this question um, right when we started the show, and I was thinking about um, kind of uh, if if we need to <laughs> if there's so much of this sort of you know there's gear people who play gearless. I wonder if we almost need to just uh, kind of have an option in the game, something like a tick box option, where it just it doesn't count any of the gear you have, so just all your champions are empty. Uh, even if you happen to accidentally open chests and uh, and uh, and get gear by accident, it could also mean that you <laughs> could take a, you could take a geared account and just tick the button and uh, and uh, and then play it gearless, uh, which would certainly save on having multiple accounts. But uh, I think yeah. it really needs a button that's just clear my gear. That's clear it. my gear. Just clear my yeah. gear. It doesn't. And that, and that button should just... be. It should just be sitting in the middle of the screen with no confirmation. Mm. And uh, there should Perfect. be a hotkey for it. Yeah. It is right next to a, the most popular hotkey that people use. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So Garwar is saying that it would create too many tickets if we did that. I think if we if we buried it in the right place in the options, if it was buried down low and had a bunch of confirmations and like, are you sure this is what you want to do, kind of stuff. Uh, then I could see potentially adding something like that, but it would, uh, yeah, we wouldn't want to make it something that someone could accidentally enable and then open a ticket and be like, hey, uh, all my gear is gone. Uh, where'd all my gear go, you jerks? Uh, because, <laughs> you know, we don't want to be called a jerk. Yeah, this We're feels like jerks. one of those options where when we open it up, it says, just a reminder, you're playing in gearless mode. Would you yes. like to turn gearless mode off? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the middle in the middle of the screen, when yeah. you change every area, it just sh flashes, gearless mode enabled. <laughs> then you go to the next area. We'll get tickets about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be an oh. option somewhere in there to turn that off. <laughs> Options all the way down. OK. Anyway. Uh, next question. <laughs> this one is from True One Hedda. Uh, why, when I try to submit a ticket, it opens a new browser and tells me I have no Steam credentials if I'm using the CNE client? That is because uh, the default, um, basically, if we don't have any credentials whatsoever, the uh, the default state of the uh, the help page is to tell you that you have no Steam credentials. Um, it's not. I mean, it's true. You don't. <laughs> it's, I mean, we're not lying. That's There's that's no it. Steam credentials. Um, yeah, uh, this is because I hate browsers and browsers hate me. And since the first time that we uh, we implemented um, the stuff, it it like there's some browser stuff that changed. I, we need to go and look at now, that. Now there is a solution to this, right? You can clear your cookies, and this will actually work. Is that like I, I thought? I that's... don't know. All right, because I did talk to Peter about this after it was asked about two weeks ago, and I do remember him saying responding in the response of like still uh and then suggesting that it was something that if if you cleared your cookies that would that would fix it now i don't know if that's a, i don't know if that's true but i know that's what peter told me um yeah ran ram is saying it's uh it's not possible to make a cne account able to file tickets hmm yeah. let's see well Some, i will let something peter know to look again. at because it is yeah yeah, because I think, I, yeah, like I say, Peter did, t when I asked him about it, because I did ask him about it, uh, he said that it was a, like a, it was a cookie issue. 
um because they had fixed it i'm i'm but. sure it is yeah okay well we'll have to take a look at that yeah Okay, next question. This is from Emote. Uh, Emote would like to know, would it be possible for Vin Ursa's first specializations to be swapped around? Front is on the left and rear is on the right. Wrong way around for how they affect the formations. Uh, same is true of Regis. Ahead on the left, behind on the right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, a, <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Um, the only concern I would have about doing that uh, retroactively is the fact that uh, people have potentially um, gotten used to the fact that they are the way they are. And uh, it's not necessarily a reason <laughs> not to do it, but um, uh, it's definitely one thing that would give me pause of like, is this just going to cause more confusion than the initial thing that was confusing? But hey, uh, hey, this yeah. is why I haven't fixed the hot and cold taps in my house, because <laughs> <laughs> they're really confused. <laughs> That's, not... that's just for you. I mean, that's, that feels different to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Uh, this is from Raphael uh, 9340. Uh, can you talk about BG3 characters since the game was released today? Sure, yeah. I mean, I love talking about BG3 characters. I'm really looking forward to playing BG3 as soon as I'm done this, uh, this stream, <laughs> now that I've got it installed on my work computer. Uh, oh, you mean BG3 characters that are going to be coming to our game? Is that? Do you think that's what the question refers to? I, I would assume so, but you know, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Um, I don't. I don't. No, I think we've we've mentioned obviously that there are Baldur's Gate three characters coming to the game. Uh, Wait, what? We have. Yeah, we mentioned oh, that oh. when we had that downtime a few weeks ago. Um, I I believe that the one the, the first one that is coming and uh, no one from marketing is here watching me right like, there's no one from marketing it, who's it, like moderating the, this week. yeah no uh, so the 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 here just a sec um, okay so <laughs> Lauren, like, cover your ears or something uh, so yeah Le Lazelle is coming first uh, and then after that there's a, a character called um, Astarian. But at least you said the name right, right? It is Lazel, right? That's the. It is Lazel. Yes, I yep. know that. Yeah. So there you go. That's my spoiler. Okay. Next there, question. There, there are oh. two others, but uh, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into those ones. They're too far away. Okay. Uh, so does that give a, a number then, Justin? Four is four the number. <laughs> <clears throat> four is four is the number in the next uh, uh, several months or so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question. This question is from the Zork. Uh, and the Zork asks, "You kept threatening us with a one-man rendition of a movie of movie scripts, but when can I expect you to do a Baldur's Gate three Let's Play on the official CNE channel?" Uh, didn't we do it? We did a we did a Baldur's Gate uh, three early access. Like Sean played several hours of Baldur's Gate 3 on the same day that we spoiled that Baldur's Gate 3 champions were coming to the game. Um, yeah, but he says you. When can oh, I expect me? you? Me uh, that's, I think this could be you specifically. Oh, man, that sounds like fun. Sure. Yeah, I'll spend work hours doing that. Hmm. You guys don't mind if, like, features hmm. and events get delayed, right? <laughs> hmm. I think you're going to have to do it after hours, I hear there's hundreds and hundreds Justin. of hours of content in there. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe, oh. uh, you know what? I will play Baldur's Gate 3 during Extra Life. Whether or not any of that is streamed, <laughs> I do not know. You know, I see I see Gabe's cursor in the dock, and I look at the time. I You know what oh, I think is coming? I don't know. I'm just waiting I, for I it. I won't know until it's typed in, because I forget about it every week. All right, well, they're not typing it in. Oh, oh. well, we'll... Let's move on to the next question. Oh, okay. uh, the next question here. Oh, here it comes. Okay. I'm just going to go for it, Gabe. Like, we're doing this. Uh, so there is a giveaway. Have you guys heard of this giveaway? It happens every week. Uh, it's for 42 gold chests. Oh, it's for... 42 sorry. chests of 42 your choice. 42 chests of your choice. It could be silver chests, I guess, if you want. Nobody's ever picked uh, that. I don't, I don't know. You could be the first. If you pick know those, you're the first. Pick. Yeah. As far as so, I know. Uh, so very shortly, there will be a word in, in chat. Uh, it'll be posted by, uh, I think, Moobot or CNE Game. One of those accounts will post the secret keyword for today. It'll probably be something related to something we've talked about. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, moderators. Uh, today's code is audio issues, all one word, all lowercase. Type in audio issues. 
Wait, Dave, a lot of people are saying audio issues. I think we're having audio issues again. Uh, uh, Andrew, you have a chance to win, uh, to win the chest. <laughs> if your name gets picked, uh, you get to pick the type of chest, and we will add 42 of those to your account. It can be any type of chest in the game, except for Gloria Bahamut chests, for legacy reasons. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so uh, good luck to everyone. What kind of chest would you pick, Dave, if you won the giveaway? Oh, I like the trans. If you were allowed to enter the giveaway and win it, and then you did win it. I like the clairvoyant, transparent aluminum chests. I think, then I open, and what I think comes in the chest. See, Plus, how I does can that see work? through the chest. Yeah, if they're transparent, then like you should be able to see what's inside before you've like thought. Yeah. So how does that? Well, you, they're, do they're the small. No, no, they're small enough. That you can see that there's something in there, but you can't see what it is. Oh. It's, it makes perfect sense. Wait. In my head. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next, uh, next question. Sure. Next question is from <laughs> Raphael9340. Uh, and they ask, do you guys have any plans to implement feats on characters with less than seven amounts of feats? Uh, since the average amount is 9.4, okay, oh, 0.4 of a feat, you know, so, yeah. uh, in relation to feats, any plans to release negative stat feats? Uh, since we got the awful ones, it would allow us to build more teams with them if we could reduce the stats of some champions. Uh, right now, we have exactly 9 champions with 79 total stats and 10 champions with 80 total stats. This would also be interesting for variants that require low stats. Yeah, um, so it's sort of a two-part question. Um, for Champions that have a small amount of feats, we're generally trying to catch those uh, when we do season rebalances. So one of the big parts of a season rebalance on, on champions is to look at their feats and make sure that they're kind of modernized and they've got all the ones that they can possibly have. Um, so yeah, we will, be, we will be adding more feats to champions kind of as we go in that way. And then uh, as regard to negative stat feats, it is something that we have considered, especially when we were starting to look at the, um, the awful ones and, uh, and also anytime we do a variant that has like, uh, you know, only allow champions with an intellect of 12 or less or something like that. Um, so yeah, both of these things are things that we've, we've considered, um, but uh, I think we decided not to do negative stat feats. I don't recall exactly why um, but um, it, it wasn't something that we decided to do then, so I'm not sure it's going to be something that will appear in the future. But um, it is, uh, I'd never say never on that. Uh, and we could come back around to that one at some point. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. This is from OG17. Uh, could there be a way to break legendary potions back into scales? Resources locked in extra potions have limited use, while scales can be used to upgrade anything. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think we'd have to think about exactly how that would work. Um, so, for example, the uh, the cost to craft um, like level one legendaries goes up based on the number of legendaries on the champion. So it starts at five hundred and then uh, goes up to to uh, whatever five hundred more per uh, per thing is you know twenty five hundred or three thousand or whatever. Um, and so we, we don't necessarily know which of those uh, it is. We don't track the cost, I think, on an individual basis uh, or the order in which you crafted them on a, on a per champion basis. So if you uh, got a legendary potion back uh, from a champion, we wouldn't necessarily know whether it was a uh, 500 scale one or a 1000 scale one or a 1500 scale one. And so I'm not sure what we would how many scales we would break those back down into. I feel like doing the minimum would be unfair. Um, doing the average would be um, uh, potentially not right. So uh, I think there's a couple of logistical issues with, uh, with this, and it would, it would require more thought, more thought than I'm giving it in this, uh, in this you know, uh, two-minute answer. So, yeah. All right. Um, oh, I'm just noticing in chat there that uh, uh, that Peter Peter Lee, our other designer, is in chat, and he's saying the reason we decided not to do negative stat feats was because they were really really limited in use compared to feats that increased patr patron usefulness. Um, so yeah, that could that that could very well be. If Pete remembers it that way, then that is the way it is because Pete is awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, here's a question from OG17 also uh, that says, is it correct that if a report on the bug tracker is marked assigned but expired, it is still on an internal list and there's no need to resubmit it? 
so that should be mostly correct uh, to my understanding. I know they do transfer um, the bugs off of that list onto an internal document when they do the weekly bug uh, meeting. So I would imagine that it is, but uh, it is something that if I knew what the exact bug was, I could check in and confirm um, because if it's been on the, if it's, if it's been marked as assigned, but it is expired, um, that begs the question as to why that is the case. If it's a bug that someone looked at, but then didn't come up with a solution, if it didn't get um, put in the proper place, or if, like, I don't know exactly, I'd have to know what bug it was. So um, yeah, that, that might be something um, worth, uh, if, it, if, it's, if it's a bug that you're concerned about, opening a ticket with that um, and being like, hey, this is here, it's assigned, it expired. Um, is, uh, is someone actually looking into this? Um, because it's sort of an odd case, I think, um, for a bug to be assigned as in, hey, someone's working on it, and then for it to be there long enough that it that it gets expired. So, um, yeah. Next question. Cool. Uh, next question is from uh, Bosanias, uh, and they ask, uh, can we get a way to open more than 50 bounty contracts or combine them into bigger values? Uh, yeah, so definitely that's something that um, needs to have an, a, a pass on to make sure we're getting the, the values on there that, that make sense as things have been getting larger. So having the option to open more than 50. And I think there's a question coming up and I know Justin loves to talk about, uh, or you did a design already for, for an alchemy shop, mm -hmm. which um, I guess maybe combining contracts doesn't necessarily count as alchemy, um, but it certainly would be just, something that would make sense. You put them in some water, they get kind of broken down. You shake it, you add something else, and then you pull out some more pit, some new paper. Yeah, I mean, I think a long drawn out process, you could do that. <laughs> but um, I think that would have been part, that is part of that system design, is it not? Uh, I didn't actually have anything for contracts in the system design, just for potions. Well, I feel like it would work the same way. Because yeah, otherwise probably. you have to have an alchemist and a notary, and I think, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to have a town screen where just all of these things are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, next question is uh, back from OG17. Um, the question is, uh, a while back you said the glitchy adventure dialogue in the journal would likely be fixed by some upcoming system change. Has this been done, or will it still be? A player comes across it multiple times when reading a new adventure. Uh, yeah, before I answer that, I do want to call out that Pete is in fact a real person now. Um, I think he was a real he person before. before. <laughs> the question. Uh, yes, uh, he definitely needs a status. <laughs> well, he's got a, he's got VIP now. Okay. That's oh yeah, good. that's what the diamond does. Yeah. Look at me, I'm learning what the icon means. Anyway, um, <laughs> back to the question. Uh, yes, so there was uh, some fixes, or there were some fixes that were made uh, to the uh, to the play history or the adventure log. Um, in the journal uh, that what that we thought would make uh, changes or that we thought would improve that issue because there was something that was definitely reusing elements in an incorrect way. Um, if it is still occurring, then that likely means it was not fixed because that would have been rolled out weeks and weeks and weeks ago at this point. Uh, so I'll tag it and uh, someone can take a look at that. Yep. Yeah, and I think the I feel like the upcoming system referred to as the uh, the collections dialogue update and I don't know that it would necessarily we would fix the glitchy adventure dialogue in the journey but journal but it would be accessible through the uh, through the collections dialogue are we doing uh, a new version of that in the collections dialogue we're having a it, it'll be possible to to view the uh, adventure the oh, adventure to actually quests just view and right okay yeah right in, um, for any adventure not just the one you're on right right okay so it might cool. be a be better alternative yeah. Uh, next question. This is from Imaginal Disc. We have a lot of tanks who don't get a lot of playtime. Can we have DPS champions uh, who does more damage at the higher their the higher their health buffs? That way, they benefit from a tank heavy formation. Uh, yeah. Uh, luckily, Pete Lee is in chat and he can write that down because that's a cool idea. Uh, and we are always looking for this. Is like the main thing that design struggles with is like how do we make every champion have like a unique thing that only that champion does while also not causing the dev team to want to murder us and uh that more. balance there is murder uh, you yeah. more jam jam has a she's got something that buffs up based on the on how big her shield is doesn't she not necessarily how big her her like her max hp is i feel like that's right i'm not but sure it has been a little while since i've played around with jamila 
Uh, yeah. All right. Next question. Straight into the point. This is from Foolish Genius eighty nine asking Crux fix when. Crux fix when. Uh, so I assume that this is um, this is in relation to Crux not tracking patron variants uh, in Xerxes properly. What do we want? And... Crux fix. When do we want it? Crux fix. <laughs> Meow. Well, no, that was last <laughs> um, or no, it was Nia. It was race car sounds. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so. <laughs> Carwar says it's been a while since anyone played with Jam Jam. Okay, I need to stop reading chat or else I'm just going to be laughing at things. So um, my understanding on this crux fix is that it was in progress. I don't actually know why it hasn't been rolled out yet. Or maybe it's harder to fix than I thought. Um, but we will tag this and check in with Peter when he gets back from, he's probably down at Gen Con too, for all I know. Um, and we'll, we'll check in with him when he gets back. Yeah. and see what the status of that is because I would have thought that would have been a fairly easy fix because we have that data so there we go yeah. uh, next question this is from eBand and I sort of alluded to this uh, before this question is about uh, an alchemy feature it says will there be a feature added for an alchemy lab or potion conversion and for example potion type speed small to medium you know cost three small and it turns it into a medium or breaking them down cross potion types etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, yeah so tell us about your alchemy lab <laughs> plan Justin yes there there is a design for something that functions very similar to this where you're able to kind of uh, trade potions up and and down uh, it also um, has as contracts. part of it, uh, well, it doesn't have contracts in there, but it could. Uh, they could have a little side business off to the side uh, where they do some notarization. Um, but yeah, so, so there, is a, there is a design for this. Um, it's a matter of um, finding the dev cycles to get such a thing into the game. And, uh, <clears throat> and I think it'd be quite cool. The, the additional thing that we kind of put on top of this, um, uh, so not just trading, but also new potion uh, new potion rarities um so we we put into this kind of a a, a, a higher rarity than epic that uh, also persists i think to the end of the adventure but has some additional kind of uh, mechanics on it uh that uh, that encourages you to just use more potions because we want uh, we want folks to use all their potions because people have a lot of potions um we've looked at the numbers and they are astronomical so we need to find a way some, to convince some people. Some of them are, yes. We need to find a way yeah. to convince people to use more potions. <laughs> okay. Where are we at? Oh, I did not mute before I did that. Right up here, next sir. question. Question. This next question is from Imaginal Disc. Uh, Strongheart has a specialty based on season progress and Vin has an ability based on bounty contracts. Does this signal that more champions with metagame abilities that could interact with emergence events, trials, and other elements? Uh, yeah, so I was kind of touching on this earlier when I was talking about sort of uh, design, trying to find ways to make champions unique and have some sort of reason to use them over another champion. And uh, yeah, so we've been looking at, uh, you know, sort of other these, these other kind of meta um, champions. So obviously Vin with the, the bounty contracts, uh, BBEG had the, the potion stuff, uh, Strongheart, Strongheart has the, the season progress. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to kind of do, sprinkle some of those in um, from time to time to, uh, to try and just make each champion feel unique, right? Like. Um, uh, Nordum's got his ability to to level up your Modron cores faster, things like that. Uh, we will um, we will always be trying to find interesting ways to make champions feel different from other ones, because um, there's nothing worse than releasing a champion that feels almost exactly like like the worst feedback we can possibly get when we release a new champion is to be like, isn't this just a slightly more powerful or slightly weaker version of X? Uh, and we've done that a couple of times, and it feels bad, man. It, it feels bad, so we don't like to do that. All right. Uh, next question here is from Henry Lonewin, who asks, uh, for the favor display, I suggest to split the list and put all the event diet deities in a <laughs> secondary list. <laughs> what did you almost say? Uh, dieters. Yeah. <laughs> event dieters. Yeah. Um, yes, it's a two-week diet. Um, all days. Well, two of them are cheat days. Uh, 
for the favorite display. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those displays where it actually has certainly got to the point um, where there's quite a few, uh, quite a few more options in there uh, than the game originally started with, and it may have outgrown the UI for that may have outgrown uh, its initial size, and Definitely. so. I, I think that um, a little bit of thought should go into that, um, maybe make that a little organized. I mean, certainly splitting it uh, by, um, the, by splitting it, minimum splitting it um, on the event deities is, is mm -hmm. one option, but I think um, uh, maybe even a, a more detailed breakdown of that might make that just yeah. more navi more navigatable because it's, it's kind of like, yeah. like four categories, I guess. There's like permanent campaigns, uh, event deities, um, time gate, Mr. Favor. And then season favor are kind of the four categories that I can think of um, that it might make sense to to split that into. Yeah. All right, here's a question. This is uh, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy this question more than I should, but uh, <laughs> this question is from uh, Carly's Not Calm, uh, and uh, they ask uh, or they say and then ask. Uh, new to the game, just split the party. Do speed oh, champions oh, yeah. and ultimate abilities act differently when they're in background party? Uh, yes, so this is a great question. Definitely something that uh, everyone should be aware of. So uh, a lot of speed champion stuff uh, doesn't quite work at this point uh, well in background parties. Um, things that uh, cause enemies to spawn faster or, uh, or reduce the, the number of quest items you need to collect don't actually affect background progress or offline progress um, like they should. They will um, at some point, uh, we hope to get that in there, so they are affecting it. Uh, but right now they don't. Uh, ultimate abilities do fire off when you're in the background party, so they do count towards progress. Uh, but basically the way offline progress and background progress works is it's just trying to figure out if you can beat the area. It's not necessarily looking at how fast you can beat the area. Um, so it just goes, say it'll take you to like area 100 and be like, can you beat area 100? And it'll simulate, say, 60 seconds of area 100 and see if you beat the boss. And if you do, it'll just say, okay, you can beat that area, let's move on to the next. And then once it's kind of figured out how many areas you can beat, it just kind of splits it splits it down and be like, okay, each area is going to take you 30 seconds or whatever. Let's see how far you get. Um, and, and so I think speed potions maybe do get in, included in that. I'm not sure if they made it through the rework. Um, and then abilities like Shandy's uh, speed up or Human's feet that also increase game speed. I think game speed stuff will work. Um, but uh, anything else that is not game speed, I don't think works in the background parties. Yeah, and I know Mark had a list of speed champion or speed abilities uh, that he was working down to get into that, but um, mm -hmm. I don't have a progress uh, report on that currently. And then he went on vacation. That's true. Too. He, what he did is also with go on, this yeah, month? It's August. It's not a good month. <laughs> this is for, not a good uh, month to ask for features. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. next question. Uh, this one is from <coughs> Smull493, and they ask, are there plans to go back to the old season reward structure or to add more rewards to the current structure? Uh, this season just doesn't feel worth the effort and resources. I will have all of the rewards and bonuses by next week, which means there's a lot of season quests there would be little point in doing besides completionism. Yeah, so this is a good question, and uh, and definitely highlights um, that we, we we messed up in in season four. Um, the the reward structure for everything past uh, level sixty was not well implemented. Uh, and one thing I will say to you is that um, if you get to level uh, ninety, uh, more rewards will appear after that. Um, so the bonus rewards um, track is actually infinite. Um, so no matter how, if, if you if you get to level 90, you'll be able to level past that and there will be additional rewards there. Um, and we are redoing the, the post 60 structure for season five. And um, the, the new structure will hopefully be a little bit more clear on both that the season pass is uh, or the, the base pass is, is one to 60. And once you've gotten to 60, you've completed the pass, but also that there are um, an infinite number of rewards for you to bonus rewards to claim after level 60 uh, if you want to do more quests and 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 uh, and continue playing the season so we are we are making some changes for season five that will hopefully make it a little bit more clear um, how that is going <laughs> um, and uh, and we will of course pivot on that based on uh, feedback to that system um, for season six and beyond if need be but hopefully knock on wood we'll get it right this time 
iterative. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll eventually get it right before we just completely change the whole thing. We'll get it right and then we'll change. Yeah, and that's, don't, don't, <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Okay, next question. Uh, yeah, the next question here is from, sorry, I was just checking the time. Next question is from <laughs> Mattias Zero, who says, uh, I've sent in a couple of tickets over this with some info. Why does it seem like the background parties are not recording patron kills and runs correctly? Uh, I have an 18 hour Strahd run that only got 1000 currency toward the weekly cap and only 500 kills towards one of their goals. Should I keep reporting these or is it a known issue? Um, I mean, that's a good question. I definitely think you should keep reporting those. I know it's one of those things that definitely takes some time to, for someone to be able to look into in detail and figure out what's happening there. But mm -hmm. that does sound like something's not working right. And it does sound like something that we should have someone spend some time looking into. Yeah. Um, Mark is probably the guy who would be the one to look into that. And as Justin noted, uh, August. But where's uh, Mark? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, Peter's out too. Um, but uh, it does. It definitely seems like that's a, that's not working the way that it should. And so, definitely keep reporting that. Yeah. yeah, I would say in general, if you're running into consistent issues in the game, if they're consistent, keep reporting them because uh, consistent issues are ones of the are the one of the easiest ones for us to fix. That's if true. there's something Absolutely. that happens every time you do something, it is generally we will be able to reproduce that, and then we'll be able to fix it. If it's something that happens like a one-off or like it happens once every couple of weeks, those ones are really hard for us to fix because in order to fix something, we have to know why it happened. And in order to know why it happened, we generally have to be able to reproduce it. So uh, yeah, if something like this is happening regularly, just keep on letting us know until we fix it because we will be able to fix it. That's true, yeah. A reproducible bug is a fixable bug. Those are so easy to fix. I um, love reproducible bugs. Yeah. Random bug, yeah. Yeah. Next Those question. Yeah, this one's from Cassius335. Uh, and they're asking, will the Extra Life streams be simul streamed to YouTube? Um, probably not. Uh, it's not oh. something we've done in the past. And I think actually, it probably, I think there, I thought there were Twitch rules that you couldn't, like as a partner, you weren't allowed to do that. Uh, not that people I don't know. obey that, but I thought that was a thing. Um, but primarily Twitch will be the platform for yeah. our Extra Life streams. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip this one because I don't actually know that we have an answer for that. Idea. Uh, next question <laughs> here, and probably the last question, um, is from Vern11. Uh, and they ask, in regards to the Area 50 chest uh, event change, uh, I agree to asking to continue after each 50 areas would be awkward. But what about offering a uh, 2,500 times cost free play to receive one chest, and then uh, like a 1,200, what is that? 12,500 cost free play for five chests on completion. So I guess scaling the amount of chests you get based on the amount of tokens you paid to uh, start the adventure. Yeah, it's that's an interesting idea. Um, I think we try to, we, we kind of try to, so the thing we're trying to address here obviously is you've got a bunch of tokens and you just want to convert those tokens into chests. Um, which, of course, you want to do, and you want to do it for uh, the least amount of time uh, possible. Um, I, I think the, the way we've initially been trying to handle that is through the store, where you can go spend 10,000 uh, tokens and get a gold chest. Uh, it's a slightly worse rate of gold chests than just playing free plays normally, because uh, normal free plays are kind of a three to one um, silver chest to gold chest, and, um, and, and that would be more of a, a four to one sort of cost or two to one and three to one. Anyway, it, it works out to be a little bit more tokens per gold chest. Uh, and we're making the <laughs> assumption there, obviously, that you don't care about the silver chest. You're just after the uh, the gold chest in order to get um, the epic gear and, uh, and, and some more stuff. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, obviously, you're missing out on some of the, uh, the item levels there as well. So I, I could see maybe implementing a system like this where sort of you can you can choose to ramp up the goal, which will then increase the number of chests you get. Um, I don't, I don't hate the idea. No. So it's interesting. You know, yeah, it's an interesting idea. We'll think about it. Okay, I can no, probably I answer this last one here, and then I think we're out of time. Yeah, we we can go late today. I mean, Sean's <laughs> uh, at Gen Con apparently, so he clearly doesn't care about uh, streaming. Uh, New Game Plus. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. Throw them under the bus. Other people get uh, to catch and I don't. 
Anyway, uh, this question is from Long Time Lurker, uh, and they ask, do you have any plans on making the option to not save feats when saving a formation? Remember your choice. Uh, for me, this is now an extra step I have to remember for every formation I save. Uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds just like an oversight. I know on the resaving of formations, we did make it so that it does remember your choice of the previous save, but I guess not for new saves. So I, I, I have no issue with making that something that gets remembered. So I'll tag that. I'd like to say that's clearly just an oversight. So cool. I think that's it. That's yeah. All we've got time for. That is it. Uh, if we didn't get to your question this week, don't worry. Uh, you will have another opportunity. Not for a couple of weeks, though. Uh, we will be back when? We won't be back next week. We won't be back next We will be back on August 24th, 24th. for yeah. more questions. So uh, hold your questions until the 24th, uh, and, and we will answer them. Uh, before we sign off, though, we'd like to thank our tireless mods. Uh, this week, it was Gabe and Lauren. Uh, thank you to both of you. Uh, they're the folks who copy your questions into our questions doc and help to make things awesome in chat. And of course, uh, thanks to all of you for hanging out, watching the stream, asking such great questions, and for enjoying the game. Because without you, no one here would get to do what we do. And we like what we do. All right. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone. All right, Justin. Seeing as we're out for the next two weeks, let's end with not just one, not two, but three. These are good, trust me. If you insist. All right. Did you know that 90% of bald men still own a comb? They just can't part with it. Oh, that was awful. All right. How about this? Why is the library the tallest building in town? Uh, I don't know why. Because it has the most stories. Of course. Uh, I'm so glad I'm away next week. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you know that I have a chicken proof lawn? It's impeccable. Okay, okay, that, that's enough. Stop, stop, turn off the stream.